Green Garden Students. Students, do you hear me? I'm the class of our hair. Back hair now. Uh, I in the beginning I said, darling uh, students, if you if, if you uh, focus on this point, do you know why? Because the disease of uh, our lecture today is uh, interested with histoplasmosis, which is referred to as darling's disease. It is just a joke, of course. <laughs> darling here it's not meaning uh, dear or darling, okay? But darling here, as you see here, is S. S as ownership is, yani he as the look, that means it um, belongs the name of the first physician who named the disease, histoplasmosis. Okay, let us uh, see what is the meaning of histoplasmosis. Uh, it is clear, the slide clear. Okay. What is histoplasmosis? Histoplasmosis is an infection caused, of course, from the name of the disease by a genus, histoplasmosis. Okay. <laughs> لا دكتورة يعني بعيدة شوية لا عادة أحسن من من يعني من شو اسمه؟ أوكي أوكي تظاهر أكو بس something wrong here and anyhow anyhow histoplasmosis is an infection caused by the cause of agent of course from the name of the disease histoplasma capsulatum the species is capsulatum histoplasma capsulatum okay the you remember this is a definition of the disease it is occur i mean histoplasmosis occur mainly where in temperate and tropical area mainly it's a preferred temperate and tropical area to all the world of course the etiological agents mainly i mean histoplasma capsulatum grows when a saprophyte it's considered to be a saprophytic agent and what does the meaning of saprophytic that means it's found as um, uh, wherever, wherever. For example, in the woods, I mean in Rabat, okay? Uh, on the um, trees, branch of the trees, uh, on vegetations, on decaying vegetations, I mean in the spoiled, okay? Wherever it's found. As saprophyte in nature, and maybe mainly, mainly how it's acquired, I mean how the, the disease is developed by inhalation of this pulse or conidia developed by the uh, agent histoplasma capsulatum. <coughs> <Sorry. coughs> most infection mainly most infection are mild or subclinical. And this is good, okay? Point for the uh, beside the patient, mild or subclinical. Epidemics of acute pneumonia, that means some patients may develop acute symptoms. Not mild, not subclinical, no. Maybe develop severe, that means acute pneumonia. That means the major disease caused by histoplasma capsulatum is pneumonia, although it's responsible of different entities of symptoms. But the major one is pneumonia. This is mainly occurred due to the exposure to uh, inhalation of what? Dust particles. Dust particles particles containing the high concentration of what of the conidia developed by a histoplasma capsulatum that's me if the dust particles contaminated with the conidia of this agent the disease the, the, the individuals may acquire inhale these dust particles and develop the symptoms if these particles <clears throat> i mean dust particles contaminated with high concentration of conidia the patient develop acute or severe symptoms. <coughs> Sorry. The common sites of uh, outbreaks, mainly where it occurred, outbreaks of the disease, in old chicken houses with dirty floors, those who um, uh, 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 interested with the chicken, okay, and the, uh, or, or when they have a how, um, or, uh, big house of chickens, okay, and these chickens, uh, I mean these houses, um, uh, not uh, <coughs> exposed to cleaning. That means it's contaminated, dirty floor, okay. The patients maybe when he enter, I mean the in, uh, the individuals who hybrid these animals, when he enter these uh, uh, places may develop the disease. Also, 
The other place <clears throat> that maybe uh, the outbreak occurred of histoplasmosis in bats, in bats infested caves. What's the meaning of bats infested caves? The caves, the كهوف يعني اللي بيها bats اللي هي خفافيش, okay? واللي بيها filled with feces اللي هو infested يعني that means the stool, feces, droplets of those animals, mainly containing that means the IgIT of bats filled with histoplasm, okay? Therefore, it's the the bats infested caves also is another source of exposure exposure or developing the disease. The, uh, the the disease occurred in both immune compromised and immune competent individuals. This is just in the definition, okay, of or um, uh, just simple information to uh, uh, imagine to have a background of the disease in the future. Now we enter to the other slide. This is a picture. What what is the command of this uh, <coughs> label? They say caution this area contaminated. With histoplasmosis, cap histoplasma capsulatum, keep out. And all of them, of course, are going to the barrel. The other side, meaning they they interested with the human hygiene and conditions, health conditions, whatever. So this area, put it in your mind. This area is contaminated with this agent. Keep out of this area because it's dangerous. Okay. Now we turn to the etiological agent. As I mentioned previously, histoplasmosis occurred by just one. A causative agent, histoplasma capsulatum. It is dimorphic. You remember the previous culture? Uh, sorry, previous lecture. I said Cryptococcus. If, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Sporothrix chenkii. If you remember it, <coughs> it is dimorphic. Histoplasma also dimorphic. That's me. What's the meaning of dimorphic? It is inside the body, yes, and outside is mold. Okay. Histoplasma capsulatum, just one uh, genus, one species. But this species consists of varieties or subspecies. If you remember Cryptococcus, the previous lecture, in the previous lecture, we have two uh, diseases, Cryptococcus porotricosis, if you remember, okay? Uh, Cryptococcus, we, we said it's Cryptococcus in new form, just one genus, one species. But this species consists of subspecies or variety. If you remember Cryptococcus newformans and newformans, Cryptococcus newformans got teeth. Here we have also two varieties in the same species, Histoplasma capsulatum capsulatum and Histoplasma capsulatum doboisii. Two varieties or two subspecies. Histoplasmosis doboisii or Histoplasma doboisii, put in your mind when I say, when I say Histoplasmosis, it, is, it means the disease. When I say histoplasma, it means, of course, the causative agent. Histoplasma doboisii, it is higher incidence or it's responsible of cutaneous and osteomyelitis rather than pulmonary. In contrary to whom? To capsulatum. Capsulatum. That means histoplasma capsulatum, if you remember in the first slide I said, histoplasma capsulatum, may, capsulatum sorry, mainly cause pneumonia. Okay? Now, because histoplasma capsulatum, capsulatum, it's more world, world, uh, worldwide dis distributed than the WCI. Because the WCI is mainly restricted in African area, okay? But the, the histoplasma, the WCI is responsible of cutaneous and bone uh, lesions, while capsulatum, capsulatum, responsible for pneumonia and pulmonary manifestations. Okay. Now... We turn to the uh, fifth slide, which is, of course, interested with the clinical manifestations. Here, because histoplasma is responsible of wide range of symptoms, therefore, the, 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 the uh, 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 definition is not easy to categorize the symptoms, okay? Starting with first important disease caused by histoplasma, it is what? Acute pulmonary histoplasmosis. The first disease, acute, of course, when I said acute pulmonary histoplasmosis, that means my mind where he oriented, of course, to histoplasma capsulatum, capsulatum, okay? Acute pulmonary histoplasmosis, this is, of course, not recognized easily by the clinician. 
when the patient go to the, uh, for example, to the clinician, he said, I'm suffering from salt, salt, salt. I mean, symptoms of pneumonia. Of course, the, 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 the clinician cannot recognize the histoplasma. Why? Because the, the symptoms are not specific. Just look like other fungal diseases. Just look like other bacteria or viral. Okay? But when there is an outbreak, for example, just look like the, 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 uh, the woods that you, uh, our jungle, that the label uh, of caution mentioned, this area is contaminated with this microorganism, okay? There is outbreak, maybe group enter this area and the outbreak may be occurred among them. The clinician may develop, uh, or sorry, uh, sorry, have an um, imagination and rec recognize the symptoms, okay? What are these symptoms the patient develops? Fever, malaise, weakness, Retrosternal, retrosternal, sternal, or funny, and your giant little heart, and many a sodary, top and a tiagi, gahda, hagaha, top and had a body gum yoga, okay? Retrosternal or pleuritic chest pain, headache, cough, myalgia, chills, nausea, anorexia, weight loss. It's not specific, okay? But it is acute uh, pneumonia. It is acute pneumonia, look like other pneumonia. These are the main symptoms that develop due to inhalation of this pose of uh, uh, histoplasmic oxalatum. Here, the patients stay for several days febrile, okay, suffering, uh, suffering from uh, fever. But at least a third of cases are febrile for more than one week. That means the patient still febrile for a few days only. But some patients, no, maybe extend more than one week, more than, maybe, more than one week. The patient may return to his full activities, okay, uh, but he is need long period of time, not look like influenza. He, he needs long period of time to return his um, uh, activity, maybe reach more than several weeks, okay. Well, well in, in chest radiography, uh, radiography, sorry, we can see, um, uh, uh, of course, pulmonary infiltrates, okay, with adenopathy, the characteristic feature of histoplasmosis. In addition to whom, to pneumonia, the patient develop adenopathy, okay? Now, pneumonia may be involved one lobe, only one lobe, but the most more common one, we can see, uh, patchy infiltrate or nodular infiltrate bilateral ones. Some of the patients develop patchy infiltrate or nodular inf infiltrate in one lobe of lung, but some of patients develop bilateral infiltrates. <clears throat> no. Some patients may be develop healing, the healing without the treatment, but this healing not meaning healing is okay. He is healed and it's okay that the, 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 the lesion improves uh, completely. No. It's healed, but it is converted to um, a sharply outlined nodule, okay? But, of course, it's still asymptomatic. This nodule is referred to as histoplasmoma. Oma, you know, it means just look like benign tumor, okay? Histoplasmoma. That means the patient may be look, um, uh, improved, okay, but not completely, of course. Uh, the symptoms may be imp improved completely, but in chest X-ray, the clinician can diagnose what is called sharply outside, of course, pulmonary nodule, wherever, lower, upper, but, but mainly, uh, mainly it's in the upper uh, lobe, okay, uh, look like um, a ball referred to as histoplasma. Now, the other disease caused by whom? By histoplasma, of course. It is mediastinitis and pericarditis, okay? Mediastinitis and pericarditis. The characteristic feature of uh, acute pulmonary histoplasmosis, I mean pneumonia caused by histoplasma, this is mainly must, 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 100%, extend to the lymph node adjacent to the area, okay? Mainly in the hilar or mediastinal lymph nodes, causing hyalur or mediastinal uh, lymphadenitis, okay? And this is <clears throat> mainly after uh, resolution of acute pneumonia. After resolution of acute pneumonia, of course, mediastinitis and pericarditis, of course, after resolution, if, if the patient's not treated, that means the patient may be resolved without the treatment, but pneumonia restricted, but may be extended to the lymph node causing 
mediastinitis or higher um, uh, pneumonia. <clears throat> Sorry, lymphadenitis. The lymph nodes, of course, enlargement, only the symptoms that the patients, uh, 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 um, uh, sorry, when the lymph nodes enlarge, the only symptoms the patient develops is only dry cough. Dry cough, that means the patient develops uh, uh, lymphadenitis. <clears throat> Sometimes massive adenopathy, massive, not hyalur, not methiastinol, massive adenopathy maybe appear in the hyalur or right paratracheal area, which is mainly uh, may be seen in the chest radiography, okay? Massive ad adenopathy involved. Any lymph nodes in the chest may be involved. This is, of course, depends on the immune response of the patient. Here, mediastinitis is covered now. We turn to the pericarditis, how pericarditis is occurred, okay? <clears throat> this is mainly occurred when the inflammation uh, extend where? to a lymph node referred to as subcarinal lymph node. Subcarinal lymph node, this lymph node, it is uh, located or laid just below the pericardium. Just below the pericardium. When it's involved, this lymph node, which is the referred to as subcarinal lymph node, of course, because it's adjacent to the pericardium, the disease uh, maybe reach the pericardium, and I mean contagious pericardium causing pericarditis. Okay. <clears throat> In more severe cases, mediastinal granuloma, mediastinal here, maybe the disease, the, the patient, sorry, developed, developed granuloma. Mediastinal granuloma, that means the lymph nodes involved in flames may be um, turned to granuloma that's due to histoplasmosis and granulitis, granulomatous, sorry, inflammation with central calciation. Here, the lymph nodes, of course, yeah, I mean, when I said granuloma, you know, the, the lymph nodes infla inflamed in the beginning. When it's, um, uh, uh, the, the, the caseation occurs in the center of the area of the lymph nodes, this is turned to granuloma, okay? And this is very dangerous case because it, is, it may be extended to the contagious tissues causing fibrosing mediastinitis. Any questions? Sally Hadilan? Shukran لك تارا. واضحة. إن شاء الله. Now this just extra. Uh, sorry, uh, this is the CT scan of the. You you see can see here the this, these are the lines here. Can you see the in the this is the chest okay and these these foci two foci of histoplasma two foci of histoplasma okay that means these the the lymph nodes and this is also these lymph nodes uh, involved okay enlarged maybe clear not clear enough the so in picture. Now, now we turn to the other disease caused by histoplasma, which is referred to as referred to as sorry chronic pulmonary histoplasmosis. That means we have acute pulmonary histoplasmosis, mediastinitis, pericarditis, and the third disease, which is the chronic pulmonary histoplasmosis. This is mainly occurred in whom? I mean, which entities of patients? Of course, not uh, pay all patients develop a, a chronic uh, uh, pulmonary histoplasmosis, but special entities, those, for example, elderly patients who have, for example, chronic bronchitis, maybe develop a chronic uh, symptoms. Of course, the, 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 the uh, agent, I mean, histoplasmic capsulitis, uh, mainly colonize the upper bar part, I mean, the upper lobe of the lung, and this, these pores tend to cavitate. So this is the, the disaster here. Cavitation is very, it is irreversible, you know. Okay, so where the chronicity mainly associated with cavitation. But not all patients may uh, develop cavitation. Well, almost then maybe uh, develop cavitary pulmonary histoplasmosis, which is considered to be it's another uh, entity. The fourth one, we will later on, we see the cavitary pulmonary histoplasmosis. Now, this is, uh, of course, fatal, fatal um, uh, because it's caused pulmonary failure, and it has um, little or no tendency to disseminate the underlying to contagious lymph nodes. It has no, little or no. Put in your mind, chronic pulmonary histoplasmosis, uh, histoplasmosis 
in general have no tendency to, to extend to the uh, adjacent lymph node, in contrary to the acute. Acute 100% may, um, uh, of course, unless the patient uh, treated, of course, uh, go to the lymph nodes and disseminated to the lymph nodes are causing um, mediastinitis. The symptoms of chronic pulmonary uh, histoplasmosis, sorry, include what? Cough, increased cough, sputum, that means productive cough, here, productive cough, vulnerable mediastinitis, if you remember, it's a dry. In acute, it's also productive, but the chronic, uh, in the chronic, also productive cough, cough chest pain, dyspnea, malaise, weakness, fever, weight loss, and easy fatigability. Of course, the patient may be exhausted and cannot um, do his activity well. Now, this chest x-ray, you hear, can see here this cavitary, this cavity, okay, this cavitary associated with the chronic, or it is maybe uh, belong cavitary lung disease, which is a different entity, this cavity due to histoplasmosis. Now, the fourth, uh, fourth one, uh, as I mentioned about cavitary pulmonary histoplasmosis, which is mainly associated with almost, not all of them, of course, chronic uh, pulmonary histoplasmosis, which is um, uh, the most important symptoms, just look like the previous one, productive cough, dyspnea, weight loss, fever, chest pain, hemoptysis, hemoptysis, this is very important, cavitary, mainly associated with hemoptysis and weakness, of course. Pulmonary lesions are most common or more common in the left mainly. They found, of course, according to the data uh, uh, collected by the patients, they found this, uh, the, the agent uh, preferred the upper uh, left upper lobe, but of course, scores of patients develop bilateral lesions. <clears throat> now, the fifth entity of uh, histoplasmosis, which is represented by his hematogenously disseminated histoplasmosis. Hematogenously, if you remember, almost all fungi that the previous diseases by fungi that we had in the previous lectures have a, a propensity to be disseminated through bloodstream causing hematogenous dissemination, and one of them is histoplasma. This uh, considered to be, well, uh, alhamdulillah, it's, co it's a rare complication because it's so dangerous. It's a rare complication of um, uh, histoplasmosis when it's go to the bloodstream, and it is um, um, why it is um, uh, considered to be um, a big obstacle because it's uh, previously or potentially, it's potentially lethal, and it is also difficult to diagnose. Why it's difficult to diagnose? Because the differential diagnosis and mimicry uh, or imitation to the other uh, diseases, okay? Now, the uh, disease mainly occurred in different uh, groups of patients, okay? The largest group, of course, approximately half of cases mainly occurred in immunocompromised patients. <clears throat> Sorry, half of patients may, uh, um, uh, I mean, half of hematogenous disseminated histoplasmosis occurred in immunocompromised patients, such as those with malignancies, um, sub, uh, those who are taking supra, uh, supra physiological doses of adrenal corticosteroids, uh, drugs, of course, AIDS patients. This is mainly occurred in those uh, patients. I mean, hematogenous disseminated histoplasmosis occurred in new compromised patients with these um, uh, entities of uh, diseases. Now, the other groups, you know, half of patients, I mean, um, who develop uh, uh, histoplasmosis or histoplasma in the bloodstream, uh, are immune compromised. The other group considered to be normal, I mean, immune competent, but how they develop the disease. Those patients considered to be in the extremes of age, in the extremes of age, Age less than one year above 50, uh, 54, above 54 years, that the, the, uh, these are risky to develop uh, histoplasmosis or pandemia due to histoplasma. Okay, what are the symptoms uh, of um, hematogenous dis uh, disseminated histoplasmosis? Of course, the patient may develop fever, fever, mainly, of course, you put in your mind because the, uh, the fungus. <clears throat> not fungus only, of course, when we have fungemia, bacteremia, viremia, parasitemia, whatever, of course, whatever, sorry, the patient developed fever, fever, sorry, he is, should be febrile, okay, fever, malaise, miliary, miliary pulmonary infiltrate, you, you, you know the meaning of miliary, I think the tuberculosis, TB, okay, so you know the meaning of miliary and distributed, okay, a small particle distributed, miliary pulmonary infiltrate, hepato, uh, hepatosplenomegaly, and lymphodenopathy. 
these are the mass symptoms cause in particular, uh, part, uh, in particular uh, the, the, the patient developed acute histoplasma, uh, um, disseminated, hematogenous disseminated histoplasma. So these are the most important symptoms. Now we turn to the other symptoms. <clears throat> uh, you remember I said it's not easy to diagnose because it has a wide range of symptoms. I mean hematogenous disseminated histoplasmosis. Mucocutaneous membrane lesions also may be evolved by, uh, due to disseminated uh, histoplasmosis. This area, I mean, this, uh, this uh, mainly occurred in up to third, up to, up to sorry, two thirds, yeah, and it contained of patients with the chronic cases. I mean, mucocutaneous membrane lesions occurred in up to two thirds of patients with the chronic uh, hematogenous disseminated histoplasmosis. Those are these, the other symptoms of patients may be developed chronic cases su suffering from adrenal insufficiency. Adrenal insufficiency. Sure. Why adrenal insufficiency? You remember I said when, when I said um, the, <clears throat> the, the histoplasma, the acute pulmonary histoplasmosis causing uh, fi fibrosing mediastinitis, mediastinitis that the lymph node caseated. Here, the adrenal gland also may be undergo caseation. Therefore, where there is a granulomatous reaction, there is caseation, there is insufficiency of production of adrenal by ad uh, adrenaline, sorry, by adrenal glands, okay? This is the meaning of uh, adrenal insufficiency. Also, CNS manifestations may be involved appro approximately eight to 29%, which is not a uh, low percentage. Eight up to 29% of patients may develop CNS manifestations. And, and, and in addition to these symptoms, the patients, I mean, all of this, of course, under the category of hematogenous disseminated uh, histoplasmosis, may be developed endocarditis. Of course, pericarditis, if you remember, I said pericarditis, pericardia, pericardium cover the, 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 the heart, may be caused endocarditis. Endocarditis may be involved what? Native and even prosthetic valves. Native valves, native valves, you know the meaning of native valves. I need to complete uh, collab. If you don't understand any term, please ask me. Native, native, uh, native, that means normal, but it is abnormal. Okay. Native, native, abnormal native, or prosthetic, artificial uh, valves. Those may develop also endocarditis or maybe comes, uh, comes from contagious pericarditis. The other symptoms may be developed due to uh, histoplasmosis, I mean disseminated histoplasmosis, is gastrointestinal histoplasmosis. Maybe any, any part from esophagus to colon may be involved. Esophagitis, gastritis, duodenitis, whatever, okay? Uh, the, the, the symptoms uh, involve this area due to a course. More when there is a bloodstream inciding, of course, I mean dissemination, there is inciding here and there, uh, in there uh, and there, sorry, every, every, any, any organ may be involved. Uh, as you can see here, this patient suffering from cutaneous and mucocutaneous, cutaneous and mucocutaneous, mucocutaneous, you know, nasal, uh, nasal uh, cavity, uh, the lips also, uh, maybe buccal cavity, this patient developed um, uh, 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 cutaneous uh, symptoms uh, due to histopla disseminated histoplasmosis. Uh, uh, and this is another one, this is mucocutaneous histoplasmosis. Can you see here this pustulated area, puff, 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 in the gen gingiva? Okay, this is uh, mucocutaneous histoplasmosis, and this is comes from due to disseminated histoplasmosis. Okay, uh, inciding the, muco uh, the, the, the mucous membrane of the gum, the gingiva. You can see this false area, saturated area, okay? This is histoplasmos, I mean, mucocutaneous histoplasmos. This is another area, this is another mucocutaneous um, uh, uh, histoplasmos. This comes from hematogenous dissemination, another uh, uh, one. Now, the other rare manifestations, the other rare manifestations of disseminated histoplasmosis is cutaneous, as you uh, remember the, the previous lecture, the uh, okay, uh, the above uh, above lecture, cutaneous uh, lesions, but of course cutaneous due to histoplasma capsulatum capsulatum that inciding blood, okay, not capsulatum WCI, capsulatum WCI directly go, go go to the skin, okay, but this is uh, histoplasma capsulatum, okay. 
lesions, cutaneous lesions in the face, uh, uh, in the genital area also may be involved. The other diseases caused by hematogenous disseminated histoplasmosis are also tendonitis, arthritis, osmolitis, chorioretinitis, peritonitis, hypercalcemia, and even orthitis. Many wide range of symptoms caused by this agent. Okay, there is another entity caused by histoplasma, which is um, ocular histoplasmosis. Ocular histoplasmosis, yeah, that means the eyeball may be involved, and this is this entity is not comes from active infection. What's the meaning of active? Yeah, and it not comes from trauma of the eye and causing contamination, maybe causing the disease. Look like other fungi that we previously have, for example, candidiasis. No, it comes from the it's late sequel of the events of hematogenous disseminated histoplasmosis. Okay, that means from the blood inceding what the blood citrine. Uh, sorry, inceding from the blood, inceding the eyeball. This is um, another cutaneous. This is mainly due to a uh, WCI, uh, histoplasma WCI rather than, uh, I, I don't know really because there is no comment on the, uh, on the picture. So either WCI uh, or it comes from uh, cutaneous um, uh, inceding. This is eye, uh, this is retinitis, this is retina, retinography, this is a retinography of cold here. You can see the lesions caused by these the lesions caused by the histoplasma. Okay. Now differential diagnosis: how we can discriminate um, um, histoplasmosis um, from other diseases? Because of course we have different entities, of course each of which uh, need um, a specialization and compare with the other uh, diseases that mimic. Of course, uh, for, sorry, a first of uh, things uh, the, is the acute pulmonary histoplasmosis. Here, um, a differential diagnosis of acute pulmonary histoplasmosis is broad when it's only single cases. That means, if you remember, I said when there are single cases, it's not easy to, to know because it's um, a, a acute uh, pneumonia look like other pneumonia, okay? But when there's outbreak, maybe it's, uh, it's, it's known easy by the, the clinician. But uh, here, uh, uh, therefore, it can be mimic. I mean, pulmonary uh, acute, of course, pulmonary histoplasmosis e easily mimic uh, uh, disease caused by mycoplasma pneumonia. Mycoplasma, it's a, a type of bacteria. I think you have it or not still now. Mycoplasma. Doctor, I think Doctor Jabari is responsible or whoever. Okay, mycoplasma pneumonia, uh, this is a pneumonia, sorry, this is a type of bacteria uh, caused pneumonia. So just look like acute uh, pneumonia caused by histoplasma, okay? Legionella, it's another bacteria. Goxiella bornitii, it's also another bacteria, okay? Or chlamydia pneumonia, I think you have it, okay? These are different bacteria causing symptoms of pneumonia. Look like uh, acute um, pulmonary histoplasmosis, okay? Uh, also, because the in chest X-ray, when we can see here, uh, you, you remember I said it's caused in acute, of course, pulmonary histoplasmosis. It's responsible for patchy infiltrate, infiltrate or nodular infiltrate. When we can see diffuse infiltrate, this is mistaken with influenza, look like influenza. Okay, miliary tuberculosis. You, me you remember I said previously miliary, miliary uh, tuberculosis. Miliary tuberculosis also may be um, confused with acute pulmonary histoplasmosis. But here. The pulmonary nodules here, pulmonary uh, nodules in tuberculosis, it's smaller, okay, and the symptom is lesser, or oh, sorry, are lesser prominent uh, in, comp in, in tuberculosis in comparison with uh, tuberculosis, uh, with histoplasmosis. Yeah, actually, with TB, it gets dangerous, but with histoplasmosis is more dangerous than uh, tuberculosis, okay. Now, concerning chronic pulmonary histoplasmosis, here the clinical and pathological features, of course, I'm speaking, if you remember, of the differential diagnosis, okay? The clinical and pathological features of chronic pulmonary histoplasmosis can closely mimic who, uh, the infection of TB. Uh, for example, mycobacterium tuberculosis, mycobacterium avium, mycobacterium cansasi, or sporothrix chenchii. You remember sporothrix chenchii that we have in the previous lecture when it's caused. Uh, pulmonary symptoms, 
or it's also mimic another fungal disease later on and inshallah in the future we have this disease which is referred to as coccidoides emetis this is also um, the symptoms of coccidoides emetis also uh, mimic the chronic pulmonary histoplasmosis okay of course how the cut of point how we can uh, 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 from this all uh, 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 from all these commands of course not just for histoplasma for any fungus of course because this mimicry how uh, can i um, uh, uh, cut uh, the the the, the uh, or put the the clue uh, to, uh, uh, to to know the causative agent of course culturing the symptoms the so, sorry this uh, the sample uh, and diagnose the causative agent is the cutoff point and to know the, the, the to diagnose and to put the good, uh, uh, sorry, give the good, the better or a suitable regimen of treatment for the patient. Now, concerning disseminated histoplasmosis, I'm still speaking about the mimicry or um, the, of course, differential diagnosis. The, the third disease is disseminated histoplasmosis. Here, um, uh, uh, you remember, I said it is so, um, his, uh, disseminated histoplasmosis, if you remember, I said it's so difficult because the mimicry of different diseases and in the same time it's fatal because it's so dangerous disease. But here, the diagnosis should be considered. Yani, should diagnosis, yeah, you put in your mind, the patient suffering from disseminated histoplasmosis, if the uh, if the patients have blood culture, for example, negative for bacteria, negative, uh, for example, patients suffering from endocarditis. I'm, I'm speaking uh, about the disseminated, okay? Patients suffering from endocarditis, okay? If, to exclude um, uh, histoplasmosis, if the bacteria negative cult cultivate the sample, blood sample, uh, the suspected bacteremia, for example, if it is but not bacteria, should my mind go where? To histoplasma, okay? If the <clears throat> patient also suffering from uh, chronic meningitis, granulomatous hepatitis, Edison's disease, idiopathic uh, thromb thromb uh, thrombocytopenia, purpura, uh, uh, unexplained leukocytopenia, fever, sarcoidosis, all of these symptoms mimic disseminated histoplasmosis, okay? These symptoms mimic uh, disseminated histoplasmosis mucous membrane lesions mucous membrane lesions you see, you saw if you remember the picture the shock the tomiyaha bil gingiva the patient had an endocutaneous with lips with, with nasal cavity uh, or nasal sh uh, shaft okay here um if you remember uh, these uh, pictures i said it's caused muco uh, mucous membrane lesions these these mucous membrane lesions resemble sequimal cell carcinoma clinically and pathologically this is also an important disease, okay? Eight patients with disseminated histoplasmosis should be suspected in those patients in particular who have fever, okay, and develop a poor thrombocytopenia and diffuse pulmonary infiltrate. That means eight patients, if they are febrile, develop thrombocytopenia, or they have a, a diffuse pulmonary infiltrate, the clinician should be oriented to the to eradicate disseminated histoplasmosis. Now, how we can treat histoplasmosis? Of course, depend on the site of infection, on the type of disease, starting with the acute pulmonary histoplasmosis. Here, antifungal chemotherapy, of course, is the drug of choice. Of course, the, most patients, if you remember, I said spontaneously may be improved, okay, but they still suffering from maybe histoplasmoma, okay, but the uh, therapy is very important uh, for, uh, uh, for all entities of patients. The second disease, mediastinitis and pericarditis, neither adrenal corticosteroids administration nor antifungal chemotherapy here uh, appears beneficial in fibrosing mediastinitis, but what is the beneficial uh, um, here, uh, regimen of treatment or choice of treatment is surgical interference here. The important role, uh, just to look at, uh, for example, thoracotomy in order to relieve mediastinal obstruction. Now, in chronic pulmonary histoplasmosis, what is the drug of choice? Ketoconazole is the drug of choice, 6 up to 12 months, up to one, week, one year. Or itraconazole, maybe also it's effective. 
In case of disseminated histoplasmosis, ketoconazole is also effective in immunocompetent, in particularly immunocompetent individuals with non-meningeal diseases, with non-meningeal, any, any histoplasmosis, I mean any disseminated with non-meningeal. Ketoconazole is the drug of choice. Uh, these uh, for the um, uh, uh, clinical response appear uh, or sorry require two up to four weeks uh, until the improvement may be occurred in eight patients i mean immune compromised patients itraconazole itraconazole put in your mind itraconazole it's a generation of ketoconazole but it is more effective and less toxic than ketoconazole it's the drug of choice amphotericin b of course it's the, it's the most appropriate drug of choice and particularly in severe cases. In case of lab diagnosis, of course, here we have just look like other uh, fungal diseases, direct and indirect. In case of direct smear, demonstration, of course, you remember I said it's dimorphic. That means it's yeast inside the body and mold outside the body. When we take the sample, of course, we suspect to see the yeast form uh, in the specimens, of course. It's butan, urine, CSF, blood, whatever, wherever, depending on the symptoms, depending on the disease developed by the patients. Of course, we can um, uh, use special stains. Uh, put in your mind, KOH, phycofluorides are not so beneficial, but we need special stain, which is the right stain or Gimza stain. Gimza stain is so spe spe specific for uh, histoplasma, uh, we can diagnose this agent easily. Okay, the specimen should be, of course, spread on slide, fixed with alcohol for 10 minutes, then stained with Gimza stain or right stain to see the yeast fungi. For, for uh, culture, food, direct, we cover the culture. Direct, in case of culture, the lysis centrifugation technique, if you remember, we have lysis centrifugation technique in the previous lectures, candidates for tricks, okay? Lysis centrifugation technique is very new technique, it's very a nice technique, new technique. It's, of course, uh, unfortunately, it's not available in our country because it needs a special uh, apparatus, okay? Uh, it is uh, so, um, uh, it's cheap uh, in comparison with the, uh, not cheap, but it is, sorry, uh, feasible. Uh, it is easy to deal with and it's faster the, um, than the ordinary uh, blood culture technique. Lysis centrifugation technique. This is used for blood cult for blood. Um, uh, I mean, in case of anemia, I mean histoplasma in bloodstream. The sediment of uh, blood after centrifugation spread after spreading of, uh, after centrifugation should, should be spread on the surface of uh, appropriate media used for the cultivation of this um, uh, microorganism. Uh, of course, the in case of this is in case lysis centrifugation technique in case of a blood, of course. In um, sputum, pus, bone marrow, depends directly cultivated on uh, the media. Uh, what is the media used here? Uh, if you remember, sabros agar, we said sabros agar wherever uh, in different fungi, but sabros agar is a general medium. Uh, put in your mind, histoplasma, capsulatum, considered to be fastidious <coughs> microorganism. <coughs> Sabros agar is not beneficial for this agent. We need special media, which is brain heart infusion agar, with the blood. It's so um, uh, uh, useful for the isolation of this microorganism. There is another media can be used for the isolation of uh, uh, histoplasma. Is referred to as inhibitory mold agar. Inhibitory? Why inhibitory? Because it inhibits the contaminant fungi that comes from the air. Okay. Or we can use also yeast extract phosphate agar for the cultivation of this agent. Incubation period for up to six weeks at three, 30 degrees centigrade. Of course, here we can uh, obtain the moldiform. Of course, the moldiform, what is the characteristic feature of the molds uh, formed by uh, this fungi, is um, a sporangium, sporangium covered with spiny condia. Later, uh, later on, of course, uh, later uh, on, we will see the uh, pictures of this uh, microorganism, okay, uh, of uh, this dimorphic fungi. This is picture, uh, the, I mean, this is a photo, no, I, I want a real one, this is culture, uh, sorry, this is a multiform, okay, this is the sporangium surrounding with a spiky conidia, this is conidia, 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 okay, this is spike, it's somewhat referred to as a spiky conidia. Okay, this is the characteristic feature. This is the plasma capsulatum. This is the moldy form outside the body from the culture. 
and this is the yeast form just uh, typically typically look like the if you remember the previous lectures for orthorex when i said the blood filled macrophage filled with the if you remember sporothrix yeast this is also macrophage filled with the histoplasma uh, yeast this is the macrophage 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 filled with the histoplasma field okay as you see here this is a magnified macrophage. This is nucleus of the macrophage. These are the histoplasma yeast. Multi, multi histoplasma. This is a, lay, a layout uh, the macrophage. Some of them inside engulfed by the macrophage. Some of them go outside the macrophage. And this is another picture. Okay, a review of the histoplasma capsulata moldy form. Sporangium surrounded with a spiky, just look like the wheel. Okay. Uh, this uh, surrounded by the uh, spiky uh, conidia. This is direct from the culture, okay. And uh, the previous one uh, magnified, and this is uh, under 40, I think, uh, magnification x power. And this is, this is all the lecture. Any question, please? Victoria, <laughs> Jarl, Afo. شكرا دكتور. ترى احنا اليوم بالوحده يلا نخلص محاضرات يعني فهاي المحاضره ما راح نقدر نقراها. يعني يا ريت انه تلغي من الكوش من الكوش بدك اثنين. الكوش هاي اقطع لكم اياها اسوي لكم اياها بالخمسه الامتحان. لا لا ماما ما اقدر اسوي لكم اياها بالخمسه الامتحان. ادفع لكم دكتوره خلي لي السبعه دكتوره بلا زحمه. مو انا عندي التزامات ماما يعني هاي عندي التزامات يعني ما اقدر. شويه اذا ممكن يعني بس تدفعي شويه. ترى من الكوش بدك اثنين. يعني شلون ماما شلون؟ شلون ماما شلون؟ شلون عيد الكلام؟ ترى اقول لك نتكوز بدنا يعني هاي مثلا اذا ردنا نشوف غير يوم لا ماما بعد لا مو مشكله يلا هاي على على السبعه ان شاء الله يلا هاي على السبعه حبدل ال ال اسوي مود السكيجيوليشن مال الامتحان اوكي مو على السبعه على السبعه ان شاء الله اوكي تمام دكتور شكرا دكتور شلون هسه تبلغ لازم انا اسوي اناونسمنت جديد بس يا ريت والله انت تبلغ اذا خاف ما يشوفون ويحسبون حساب على الاربعه لان هم حاعتمد عليك انت حاعتمد تمام دكتور اوكي وياي يا ماما تسمع تمام تمام نعم دكتور سمعت شو اسمه بلغ على الكروم انا حسوي اناونسمنت على الكلاس روم بس تبقى هم عليك انت لازم تبلغ تبلغ الممثل المرحله وهو يبلغ اوكي ان شاء الله ان شاء الله دكتور تمام اوكي ان شاء الله الله يكرمك يلا شكرا باي باي هلا دكتوره